quadratic formula. Okay, so so far we have learned two methods to solve quadratics. The first one was graphing, and then we learned how to use solving by factoring. So now the, <coughs> the last way we're going to learn is solving by using the quadratic formula. So if we have an equation in the form ax squared plus bx equals c, I'm sorry, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then we can use the quadratic formula, this big thing down here, in order to solve for our solutions for the quadratic. So one big thing to note is that we need to always have our original equation equal to 0. So if it's ax squared plus bx equals c, we'll need to move that c over to always have the 0 on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so here's just um, a little example of how to use it. and I've color-coded each um, number so that you kind of know where it fits in. So if we start with this problem, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0, then we know that our a is 1, b is 6, and c is 8. a, b, and c are always the coefficients in front of the x squared, x, and the constant. Okay, so taking our formula, we're just going to plug in 1 for a, 6 for b, and c, or 8 for c. So we get this right here after we've plugged in everything. Be careful, negative b, you always change the sign of the b to begin with. Also another note, I always put my b in parentheses right here whenever I square it, um, just in case there's a negative so that we don't mess up. Okay, so now we're going to start by simplifying the inside. 6 squared is 36, and 4 times 1 times 8 is 32. So now I have 36 minus 32 on the inside. 36 minus 32 is 4 in the next step. The next step, we're just taking the square root of 4, so we get negative 6 plus or minus 2 over 2. And then our last step is to break this, write it twice, once with a plus sign, once with a minus sign, and simplify. Note that we usually always have two answers for quadratics, so that's where this plus and minus comes into play. We'll get one answer with a plus and one answer with a minus. You're going to see an example in a minute where we're going to have only one answer, and so that will kind of probably answer the question of when do we get just one solution. Okay, on our first example, we need to start by getting everything on the same side of the equal sign. I'm going to add over the 9x squared, and then I will have everything on one side. Okay, so now my a is 9, my b is 30, and my c is 25. Okay, so setting this up, we're going to have x equals... First, we have negative b, so negative 30, and then plus or minus the square root. I always put my b in parentheses, so 30 squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. Next step, I'm going to simplify the inside of the parentheses. And I can take a calculator and put this entire thing in the calculator and hit enter. So if I put all of that in, parentheses and everything, I'll get negative 30 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 18. 2 times 9 is 18. So anytime you end up with a 0 in the square root right here, you will only have one answer. The reason is, is because square root of 0 is just 0. And thir negative 30 plus or minus 0 is negative 30 either way. So my only solution is going to be negative 30 over 18, which simplifies to negative 5 over 3. So this quadratic only has one solution. If we were to think about graphing it, then our vertex would only touch the x-axis once at negative 5 over 3. So about right there. And it's going to open up because I have a positive 9x. Okay, next example, we have a little bit more moving around. Um, I'm going to put everything on the left side this time. So if I subtract my 3x over, I'm going to need to combine that with my 5x. And subtract my 4 over, there's nothing to combine it with. So I'm going to get negative 7x squared plus 2x minus 4. It's very important to put that negative 7x squared first because that's our a value. And if you had this out of order, you might think that a was a different number. So we have negative 7 is a, 2 is b, negative 4 is c. 
So here we go. x equals negative b, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. All right, so again, we're starting on the inside. If we take all of that and put it in our calculator, we're going to get negative 108. Okay, and we're going to need to simplify the square root of negative 108. First of all, we know that it's going to be an imaginary number because anytime you take the square root of a negative, you get an imaginary number. So this negative will come out to be an i. And 108 is not a perfect square, so we need to find the two biggest perfect squares that divide 108. And that's going to end up being 36, and then 36 times 3 is 108. So whenever I break this up, I get the square root of 36 is 6, and i comes out because of the negative, and the 3 is left in the square root. Okay, one more thing that I can do to simplify this is look at these three numbers. Notice I did not look at the three inside of the radical. If I can divide these three numbers by a common factor, then I can simplify this fraction further. And they will all divide by a negative two. So negative two divided by negative two, I'll get a one right there. Six divided by negative two is gonna give me a negative three, but since I already have a positive and a negative three, it's just gonna say stay plus and minus three. The i and the square root three stay the same. And negative 14 divided by negative two is seven. So there's my final answer. This is two answers. It's one with a plus and one with a minus, but we can just write it this way.